Right now we're at the western terminus of historic Highway 80, one of America's most important early highways going coast to coast, from Georgia in the east to San Diego, California in the west, crossing eight states on its way. In California, the highway crossed the Sonoran Desert, the mountains of San Diego's East County, until finally making its way into the city of San Diego itself. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at the top 15 things to see on historic Highway 80 in California. Highway 80 was one of America's first numbered highways and was America's first all-weather coast-to-coast highway. It originally stretched from Savannah, Georgia and later Tybee Island in the east to San Diego, California in the west, covering 2,725 miles. And while it doesn't get the hype that Route 66 does, it's just as historically important as its northern cousin. This was the highway of Bonnie and Clyde, where Tom Mix died, where the Selma, Alabama voting rights march took place. And by the 1940s and 1950s, it was bringing more people into California than Route 66 was. So this is our look at 15 things to see and do on historic Route 80 in California from east to west. The Ocean to Ocean Bridge is how travelers on Highway 80 would cross the Colorado River and arrive in California up until 1958. Built in 1915, the Ocean to Ocean Bridge was the first highway crossing of the Lower Colorado River. It was originally closed to vehicular traffic in 1988, but after some major renovations was reopened to automobiles in 2002. Despite being well over 100 years old, the bridge still looks fantastic, especially at night. And the narrow, one-lane bridge is still a great way to enter the state of California. Next up is probably one of our favorite roadside attractions in the entire state of California, the History of the World and the Museum of History in Granite. And while the center of the world wasn't historically on Highway 80, having been built in the 1980s long after the highway was decommissioned, the street that the center of the world was on was originally Highway 80, and it's such a fun and unique place to visit, we had to include it on our list. I mean, really, this place has to be seen to be believed. In addition to the purported center of the world, there is also the Museum of History in Granite. The museum has over 900 granite panels documenting human history that is designed to last up to 4,000 years. Conceived and commissioned by Jacques André Estel, who we're told writes and researches all of the information on the panels himself, the Museum of History in Granite is massive. I don't think the video does it justice just how big it is. It's definitely a great place to spend a few hours walking around. Built in 1915 and in use until 1926, the Old Plank Road is an amazing piece of highway history. And while most of the Old Plank Road has been swallowed by the sands of time, you can still find a small piece of it at the Imperial Sand Dunes Recreation Area. It's crazy to walk through the sand along the Plank Road, imagining cars traveling on it a century ago. It really helps you to appreciate modern cars, and especially modern roads. Holt Park is the centerpiece of Holtville and has several interesting monuments to check out. Highway 80 used to run right down Holtville's main street and that's where you'll find Holt Park, the centerpiece that the town was planned and built around. Holtville City Hall is located at the park as well as this war memorial listing all of the service members who have died in action from the town of Holtville, a monument to the history of Holtville and W.F. Holt, the founder of the community, and this pyramid that holds a time capsule. But probably the coolest thing to see there for highway enthusiasts is this old auto club traffic pillar. This pillar would have stood in the middle of the intersection at 5th and Main, showing the distance and direction to various locations. Our next spot to check out on historic Highway 80 is the nearly 100-year-old Imperial County Courthouse. 
It still feels like you're stepping back in time into the 1940s and 1950s. If any Hollywood studio is looking for a filming location that looks like it's 75 years in the past, they should definitely check out El Centro's Main Street. Main Street is where you'll also find the Imperial County Courthouse, which Highway 80 used to travel right past. The courthouse was built in 1924 and is still in use today. In front of the courthouse, you'll find the building's original cornerstone and a trough for horses that was built in 1924 to convince ranchers to do business there. The building is beautifully designed and despite being nearly 100 years old, still an imposing structure on Highway 80. Our next stop to check out on Historic Highway 80 is one of the first places that you'll come across when entering San Diego County, the Desert View Tower. The Desert View Tower was built between 1922 and 1928 by Bert Vaughn, who owned the nearby town of Hakumba. Vaughn dedicated the tower to the pioneers, highway, and railroad builders who opened up the area. It also used to serve as a roadside advertisement for a restaurant and bar that was located across the road. For nearly a hundred years, travelers have been climbing the tower and admiring the great views of the desert below. And if you look close enough, you can even see remnants of the original Highway 80. Adjacent to Desert View Tower is Boulder Park where you could find a great number of creatures and animals that were sculpted into rock by Merle Ratcliffe in the 1930s. It is a really fun place to climb around, trying to find all of the different sculptures, and you can easily spend a few hours exploring and just trying to find everything. From Burt Vaughn's Desert View Tower, we then move on to Burt Vaughn's town of Hakumba Hot Springs. Rail service first came to Hakumba Hot Springs in 1919, and by 1925, the town had a world-class hotel. In the 1920s and 1930s, the town was extremely popular, and was a prime destination for many of the foremost movie stars and celebrities of the time. But eventually the interstate was built, and Hakumba Hot Springs was bypassed sending the town into economic decline. What we see now is all that's left of that once world-class hotel. Nowadays, there is one hotel and spa left in town, though it has closed and reopened a number of times over the years. And as of the making of this video, it was closed again, but with a sign saying that it would reopen in late summer. It's a lot of fun to walk around the town and just imagine what it would have been like in the 1930s with movie stars everywhere. You can even go into the old bathhouse and walk around and just kind of explore the building. And you can see how big the building was and just imagine how grand it would have been inside of it. And when you walk around the ruins, you can't help but think, what a road just moving a few miles away can do to a once thriving community. There is actually a lot to see and explore in Acumba Hot Springs, and you can easily spend at least half a day there just looking around. Next, we have probably the sweetest stop on Highway 80, the Wisteria Candy Cottage and Boulevard. The Wisteria Candy Cottage has been in business since the 1920s, with almost everything in the store being handmade. And, prior to the building being used as a candy shop, it was once the town's one-room schoolhouse. Everything we've tried there has been delicious. But then again, if a place has been in business since the 1920s, there's usually a reason for it. If you have any sort of sweet tooth, the Wisteria Candy Cottage is definitely a place you want to stop on historic Highway 80. While there isn't a whole lot to see at the ghost town of Buckman Springs, there are a few ruins to check out, and there's the hidden grave of the town's founder. Most visitors to Buckman Springs probably only stop at the rest area off Interstate 8, where you can find a historic marker telling the story of the town. 
About a quarter mile down Highway 80 from the rest area, you could find the ruins of the Buckman Springs bottling plant, which once bottled Buckman Springs famous lithia water, which was popular in the early 1900s. By the 1940s, agriculture in the area had dried up the springs, and the bottling plant and the Buckman Springs Resort were no more. All that remains of the town of Buckman Springs today are the ruins of this bottling plant, a few nearby foundations, and the remains of the Buckman Homestead site, which falls further into ruin every single year. At the Buckman Springs site, you can also find the hidden grave of the town's founder, Amos Buckman. In 1979, when the state was redoing the freeway fencing, they unearthed Mr. Buckman's grave. Rather than move the grave, the state decided to angle the fencing around it, and the family later added a new tombstone. The grave is not visible from any road, and takes a little bit of work to find it, but it's definitely an interesting curiosity on Highway 80. One of our favorite places to stop and grab a bite to eat on Highway 80 is Frosty Burger in Pine Valley. Pine Valley feels like the classic American small town, and very few things are more vintage Americana than a hamburger stand. Frosty Burger has been in business for over 40 years, and they make some great hamburgers, not to mention their milkshakes and sundaes as well. It is the perfect place to stop after a long day exploring Highway 80. Next up is the Viejas Casino and Resort. Viejas is just one of a number of casinos that are located between Yuma and San Diego on what was once Highway 80. And we aren't really gamblers, so I can't see how great the casino part is compared to the other ones along the way, but the casino is not the reason that we selected Viejas for this list. The reason we selected Viejas is because of the beautifully designed and landscaped outlet center across the street. There are animal sculptures of the area's indigenous animals all throughout the mall, as well as artwork representing the native Kumeyaay culture. You don't often get to say this about a mall, but it is a serene place just to walk around. And while the number of stores currently there leaves something to be desired, it does also have Southern California's largest outdoor roller skating rink. While not technically on Highway 80, the La Mesa Rail Depot is just a couple of blocks away and a must stop for any history buff. Built in 1894, the La Mesa Rail Depot claims to be California's oldest building in its original form and is the sole surviving San Diego and Cuyamaca Railway Station in existence. The station is currently operated by the Pacific Southwest Railway Museum and is open from 1 to 4 on Saturdays only. And while unfortunately you can't catch a train there nowadays, you can catch the San Diego trolley right next door. When the Lafayette Hotel was built in 1946, it was considered to be on the outskirts of San Diego, making it the perfect place for movie stars of the day who were visiting San Diego but didn't want to be in the busy city center. In the 1940s and 1950s, the hotel was visited by a who's who of Hollywood, and the swimming pool was even designed by Olympian and Tarzan actor Johnny Weissmuller. The Red Fox Room Steakhouse, which claims to have first opened in England in the 1500s as part of their elaborate history, used to be attached to the Lafayette Hotel, but has since moved across the street. And right by the Lafayette Hotel is what in my opinion is the coolest neon sign on Highway 80 in California, the Boulevard sign. If you get a chance to see it at night, it is definitely worth driving by. Balboa Park is the crown jewel of San Diego, and it just so happens that Highway 80 used to pass right through it. Balboa Park is home to more than 16 museums, the San Diego Zoo, gardens, trails, and many other creative and recreational attractions. While Balboa Park began as City Park in 1868, a lot of the current buildings in the park were built in 1915 as part of the Panama California Exposition. You'll notice the Spanish Renaissance style buildings all throughout the park. When they were constructed in 1915, it was one of the first times that this architectural style was used in the United States. Really, there is so much to see and do at Balboa Park, and no visit to San Diego would be complete without going there at least once. 
San Diego's Horton Plaza was the western terminus of the 2,726 mile coast to coast US Highway 80. At Horton Plaza there is a small park where several notable events have occurred over the years, including John F. Kennedy speaking there just six days before the 1960 presidential election. The centerpiece of the park is the Broadway Fountain, which was designed by Irving Gill and built in 1909. Around the base of the fountain, obscured by the water, there are plaques depicting prominent early San Diegans, including Alonzo Horton, for whom Horton Plaza is named. There are also a few other monuments located in the park. Horton Plaza was also the western terminus of the Old Spanish Trail and the Jefferson Davis Highway. Ironically enough, there used to be western terminus markers for both of those highways that had to be removed due to Confederate references, as evidenced by this hole in the ground where the Old Spanish Trail marker used to be, but there has never been a western terminus marker for Highway 80 at Horton Plaza for some reason. Maybe that's something the city can consider putting in this void where the Spanish Trail marker used to be. Marker or not, Horton Plaza was still a great place for Highway 80 to come to its end. So that's our look at the top 15 things to see on historic Highway 80 in California. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and we'll see you next week.